Yeah, it was, it was a reconciliation process for the two bodies, so that we have alignment that with the planning commission and the, and so the council are both working for the same, the same document as documented as spots. Sounds good. I, I just want to give the planning commission a kudos. They spent a lot of time on this, and uh, it's a lot to read, and it was a lot to read, but they've done a good job. I appreciate it. <laughs> there, there was there was conversation around that part, and I don't remember if we got this way changed, but we would all have a conversation about it. Maybe it'd be something that was missing in this Well, and now that it's been so long since I went to this shop first got it, I, I probably need to go back to it to play wordsmith. See if it's just anything that I find alarming. Well, now you're very good at it. Any other conversation, discussion? Well, we do need to figure out the next step. So I think the appropriate ask of this body, and I'm not trying to tell them what to do, I'm just trying to get action. We need to ask Mr. McCord to um, bring us some proposal on those three changes that we're talking about. Actually, the one's just words and the other two, other two areas. Do you think that's a good way to go forward? Of course, you plan. I'd be glad to do that. I want to clarify what the exact changes are in the geographic areas and the effect on what I'm, my notes I was taking. We want to restructure the paragraph that refers to the redevelopment on Southwater Avenue on page, I think, 86. Revitalize is the better word also, that rural area that we're talking about, there's a second discussed. This area that's been designated for rural in the south central portion of the town. Some of it's not in the city limits now. And we want to somehow tie a policy on construction of a roadway contingent upon the land exchange. I, I don't think he was asking for that. For the changes to have something kind of added saying that should uh, a connection be established by the investor slash developer, then that area is certainly um, subject to and recognized by the city as one that might like to change. Okay. Uh, are you suggesting then that the roadway be <coughs> at the intersection of Nichols Lane and Clear Lake Meadows be realigned and the roadway extended? from its current terminus just south of Nichols Lane to Peach Valley Road before any land use changes have been made. Uh, we're just saying when, Part the, of the, the, when, when, when the road is realigned at Nichols Lane. Are we not doing that anyway when things like a new road is built? Are we going to go in and change? <coughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I just think there's strength in articulating a vision and document like this, especially with because when you look at the city and you see, you know, a core with a long range vision for development, and you see these areas that aren't, it makes you feel like, why are they so often? I mean, is that toxic wasteland? Is that, you know, uh, a land preserve? Or, you know, that would just make you feel like that. My concern is the timing issue. Someone's not going to be wanting to make an investment. Cities have a different schedule for making the alignment of the road or imposing the commission on the developer or the developer volunteering to make a construction. There's a lot of 
variety of options I could unleash. I think you could leave it where it was and say there is an essential need that the city is not willing to um, assume to have this road path. And so there would have to be a plan for that before any intensive development happened in the city. Um, and then the third one was changes to. Yes. I'm not sure the extent of that area. <coughs> Over the road, probably from 109 out to see that road. I can look at them, you know, the, the, um, the more granular map with you and show you where I'm thinking the potential goes. Because there was some discussion about that. There were some ideas that could be Commission working session. I mean, depending on how parcels lie and all that kind of thing, I think we are not involved in um, a proposal to show you the signs of that published by the Okay, and I want you to be aware also of in which phase it's on, let's say, five or six or something, is there's a, a sense of overlay uh, activity center. Well, that's roughly in the area between the airport and along the Green Pump Road and Pilot Park. I'm talking about that part that comes right off of the way that I'm going to do is find out that way of the stop is. That's where we find the stop. Yeah. Would well, this affect uh, the development need with uh, uh, the grain site out there and those people? Uh, the cemeteries would be protected no matter what type of development. The land use plan won't affect that. No matter whether it's the land use plan won't affect that. So if there's any development out there, those areas would be set aside and preserved, of course. Okay, then I uh, don't know how long this will be to develop language. I have to work with the mayor to develop language of appropriate at least before we take it back to the next meeting to get blessing and to the planning commission. And uh, I'm going to mention them back. Uh, any other questions? Is there anything that we all look at that we're not bringing through? <laughs> uh, you know, things keep changing politically, I guess, and geographically. And right now, there is no policy in our comp plan that deals with the city's. Uh, and, and David might want to speak to this about uh, restricting city utilities to properties within the city. Yeah, I've been wrestling with that a lot too. I think that that could help us keep density located where it should be and not spreading out everywhere. Um, years ago, we did that because we thought that was the smart thing to do to get investment in our area before we had such a demand for it. But I'm thinking now we kind of want to. Well, the old comp plan did have a policy that essentially said that, that right. utilities. But remember, we changed it. Like but, the re but the comp plan kept the same policy, which the council never adopted. The council did adopt, went back and forth, adopting resolutions to either restrict it or allow it. So right now, the policy in effect, the resolution, which was passed in about 2016 or 17, allows it. So. What could happen is that people who want to develop in the hey, we're online, Larry. Allows it. Sorry, people sorry. who want to develop <laughs> in the uh, surrounding the city using city utilities would be able to do so, of course, at their cost, assuming there's capacity available, but at their cost and develop in the county surrounding the city, and that would obviously fabricate or uh, uh, this fragment uh, over the time longer period of time of the city's ability to grow and service those areas. And I truly don't know what the right answer is. I mean, you know I wish the county would develop a more preservation approach to the development out there where they, you know, clustered and 
preserved rather than one, 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 one everywhere. Well, we, and we may get uh, a surge of annexation requests here in coming years. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. McCord. He's up next, too. Done. Okay, let's move on to item number two. This is an ordinance 02205-25, amending the Gallatin Zoning Ordinance to remove the use of animal care with conditions and to add the animal care limited use as a permitted use in select zoning district. Mr. McCord. Okay, this next item is a uh, request is really made by the Planning Commission after a presentation before the Planning Commission for a uh, master plan <coughs> amendment to allow animal care on a property that didn't comply with the provisions of the existing ordinance. So some of you on the council may remember a few years ago that uh, we amended the code to uh, have a use called animal care with the following conditions and it had some limitations. It was a little more restrictive than general animal care that's mostly restricted to commercial zoning districts. So this opened up animal care with these restrictions in uh, uh, let's call it lower intensity commercial areas including MRO, MU zone, PNC plan neighborhood commercial and CC zones. So these were the smaller scale animal care facilities. And you may remember also that the Bluegrass Animal Clinic, which is out there uh, on 109 at the entrance to Lennox Place, was the, the beneficiary of that uh, initial change in the code. Well, uh, I guess it was back in December initially that an applicant um, applied for a master plan in, in, as part of the Kensington Downs development, and that's just down Freedom Church Road. And they wanted to put in an animal care facility, and it's zoned uh, MRO out there. So uh, the problem there, of course, is they're limited to only the type of animal care with the, those conditions. And their facility didn't meet those conditions. So as it went through the Planning Commission, the Planning Commission kept discussing about how they can essentially allow this type of use in there, even though it didn't qualify as an animal care with conditions use. So uh, eventually they came back and they approved an ordinance subject to, uh, excuse me, not an ordinance, a resolution, subject to an ordinance being amended that would allow them to build what they want to do. So that's why we're here. And the Planning Commission did go through this and had several meetings where they discussed this proposed change. And so what we had proposed to the Planning Commission is that they change it from uh, animal care with these following conditions to just to retitle it as animal care limited. It's the, basically the same thing. But they changed the conditions. And the basic changes that they made were that the distance between an existing residential structure for this animal care would be uh, 500 feet if they had a larger outdoor run area. If it was, if they had a, a residence within 500 feet, it's, it's, it's complicated. Then they have a smaller allowed outdoor run area. And then they also had some limits on the hours that they could operate. So you're not going to have barking dogs and <coughs> crying cats maybe uh, at the during the nighttime. So the outdoor activities would be limited to the daytime hours and uh, slightly different on the weekends, a little more restrictive on the weekends. And so the Planning Commission reviewed that ordinance and that's what you have before you is an ordinance that will modify the uh, animal care limited is what the title is. Please call the roll. Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderman Garst? And uh, so if you're willing to make those changes, what will happen is that it, the resolution that the Planning Commission approved for that would be eligible and, or enacted. Right now it's not enacted. So it would take this ordinance to change the code to the, qualify that resolution. Um, I think I covered most of it. I'm, if you're familiar with where the cheer gym and uh, I guess it's gymnastics mm -hmm. gym is next to Freedom Church, there's a, there's a vacant lot there just to the south of that. And that's where they would like to construct uh, this facility. Um, 
Right now, there is a master plan for Kensington Downs subdivision. Part of it's under construction now on the north end, and it will wrap around the back side of that. So eventually, there will be houses that will be fairly close to this facility. However, they're not existing, and that's a key word in this ordinance. It talks about existing. Now, obviously, with all these little intricacies of the ordinance measuring the time and the hours and so forth, there's an enforcement mechanism. So uh, where these things will be occurring over time, we'll have uh, possible enforcement issues, particularly, I would think, uh, related to noise, which could be done under the noise ordinance. But there may be some other things. But uh, every time you add some kind of intricacy like that, that opens the door for uh, how we're we going to enforce it. I also want to point out that those districts that I mentioned that this applies to, uh, they're all over town. So you can imagine there's places that are zoned MRO and MU and PNC that are adjacent to residential developments right now. So uh, they may re be restricted and allowed and with a smaller outdoor area, but as newer development, uh, if they select a site and newer development comes in around it, they will be uh, a little bit different standard. The noise standard still applies. That's part of the city code. So it doesn't matter whether uh, the, the distance is qualified or not. It's the noise that would uh, probably be the likely um, issue that's related to code enforcement. Bill, isn't that the same? It wasn't that brought up is the same as if somebody builds a house, housing development near the airport. They, they, know, what's, they know what's there. <laughs> before they build it. Yes, that, uh, I guess that we, was an the analogy. The restrictions we were putting on there are keep the noise to certain hours. <laughs> As he said, to certain hours and a certain distance from any residen residences. <clears throat> Thank you. Motion to send it on. We have a motion to send uh, to um, send it on and seconded. And uh, do we have any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any objections? <coughs> uh, the next order, uh, the next item is a resolution number. R2205-44, and that's a resolution approving a mural at 118 West Main Street. And I understand we have a representative here who would like to have a uh, make a presentation. Yes, we'll welcome him to the podium along with Kim Baker. I will just remind this body that the um, process that we put in place some years ago was that we would submit proposals to the Arts Council. They would... Um, either confirm or deny that the proposed mural was art that enhanced the community of our character, uh, enhanced the character of our community, and then this body would then vote to allow it. And so tonight we have a very special um, proposal before us, and I'll turn it over to Ms. Baker. Thank you. Thank you for um, listening to us tonight. And tonight I'm excited to bring a good friend of mine, Liam Alexander, before y'all. Um, he does not need me up here, but I wanted to introduce him. And my name and signature is on that application and the information you've received, but he is the brainchild behind all of this. So thank you, Liam. Mayor and Council, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. I would like to address item number three on the agenda. My name is Liam Alexander, and I'm a Boy Scout with Troop 407 here in Gallatin. We meet at the First United Methodist Church across the street. I am working on my Eagle Scout project, and the mural proposed in item three is a vital part of that project. Our project is much more than just the mural. I've been working to transform the alley between the Chamber of Commerce and the Secret Garden for the last year. I call the project Hawkins Alley after the late Mr. Jim Hawkins. He was an example of a good citizen and showed many of us the value of doing good deeds. He was an inspiration to me and many others. In the alley, I have added a blessing box. It is a pantry for non-perishable food items for those that need to be blessed or take a blessing. There is a kindness board to leave notes with kind messages and inspiration. 
I also installed a flag drop box for American flags that need to be retired. There's new lighting and the landscaping, along with a table and seating. Leadership Gallatin also donated a free little library for the alley. The mural I am proposing would say, do a good turn daily, which is the scout slogan, but also what I want to what I want my project to inspire in the citizens and visitors of Gallatin. I want the outlet to be more than just a pass-through, but an opportunity for anyone to do a good deed, either by donating to the blessing box, writing a note of kindness, or sharing a book in the library. I want Hawkins Alley to become a reminder to everyone that kindness can be simple and should be shared. Every time someone takes a picture with the mural and shares it to someone else, the message will be a reminder for all to take the time to be kind. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. What a lovely Beautiful. description of what you're creating yes. and, and so reflective, I think, of our community and the character that we want to exhibit. Motion, send it on. Second. Okay. Any discussion? I have one question. Uh, you have two renditions of it. Uh, yes, we are currently deciding on which one to use. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor, just... Uh, uh, uh. Anyone opposed? Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Okay, the next item is uh, fix fiscal year 2022-23 budget presentation, Mayor. Yes, and I have a clicker. Um, you all have the detailed version of the budget from Ms. Nichols, and I don't, know that, I don't know that I have one, which I could need one if um, you guys have questions you want me to answer. Um, rather than going through all my stacks of paper. But basically, I'm going to present to you just kind of the overview of the budget like I do each year, and then you can use your detailed budget to go and contrast and compare. But, um, you know, I, I, lo <clears throat> I love doing the budget. It's always challenging, but it's also very exciting because it helps <clears throat> me in my mind draw um, the future of our city and you know what we're going to be doing this year and things that we need to be thinking about for future years. And so um, with that, I'm pleased to present to you all the 22-23 budget this year. This is definitely the largest budget number the city has ever seen, um, 50935720 That includes the operating expenses of 42, close to 4, revenue of close to 50, or well, $49 million, and then capital of um, $8.5 million. Um, this budget number is big this year, and a lot of the reason that it's so big is because our department heads and our grant administrator in this body have been so supportive of the application for grants that we have done. So we have a lot of grant dollars flowing through on that revenue line. That is not all recurring revenue that we can count on. A lot of that revenue is programmed grant dollars that we will be utilizing in this year. So compare this budget to last year, you can see a sizable increase, actually 17.75% increase, again, for the reason that I just explained. I want to give you a look at kind of the sales tax revenue because, you know, this is the crazy story that is not in common anywhere in Middle Tennessee, but I would submit that we are probably a little bit um, more fortunate than e even the other cities. So you just look back 22 to 21, 6, 5 versus almost 8, and the state shared 2, 3 to 3, almost 2. Um, tremendous increases. And then when you look back and realize just in 2018, <coughs> we were at 5, 6, and now we're at almost 8. How do you think that? Oh, it's so many things. I think... Um, um, you know, it's, it's the growth of the households here. It's certainly the growth of the commercial and restaurants that we have in our community. But, um, you know, I'm also really um, becoming aware of some of the impacts of the location of Facebook and all those employees here. I had a really interesting conversation with a friend of mine just yesterday, and he told me that his son works for a local company and has been here forever, 
I would have no idea that they would be a supplier to Facebook in any capacity. But he told me he's selling to him between two. Uh, that he is selling to Facebook between two hundred and three hundred thousand dollars a month, and he is now going to be selling to them to support their um, um, their plant in Alabama. So you know that's an impact on our city that we did not even count on when this started happening. But, um, but yeah, so that's, that's part of it. Certainly, you know, there's some impact from the stimulus checks that happened in the last couple of years. There's some impact because there's a lot more people that are not leaving Gallatin and going to work somewhere else. Um, so there's so many things that are coming together to impact that. And, and it, I'm optimistic, but we are hitting difficult times ahead. And I think people spending will um, decline and we'll see numbers decline, but I think we're in a very strong position and should be able to um, navigate more difficult waters when they come. Um, so this is the property tax revenue. You know, I was really, um, really disappointed to see such a small gap between 21 and 22, but we do know that historically getting the properties on the tax roll as they're supposed to be has been a challenge. Um, we've had, I think they're supposed to be on the tax roll, with, was it 90 days or 120 days? Anyway, they're supposed to be on the tax roll in a, a, in a defined period of time, but we've had some go very, very long time, and so we don't get their taxes for a year. It's really, it's really frustrating and disappointing, and we've tried numerous times to adjust that. This is a number that Councilman Mayberry used to always ask. It's, you know, what does a penny bring in in revenue to the city on our property tax? It's 173220 I can remember when it was under 100000 So that's making, uh, I don't know, and that has to do with property values. Um, revenue versus expenditures, just to kind of give you a full picture of where we are. The revenue that we're using is, um, you know, the revenue that we're projecting coming into our city is 46 $0.8 million. Our operating expenditures are at 42372 You take our revenue, subtract our operating expenditures, we're left with 4.461. So um, when you add that to make our total budget number, we're essentially $1.9 million short, and for that um, I have um, um, suggested to you all that we use reserve funds, which is what we have done for a lot of years. We use surplus from years prior, and I'll show that to you in more detail. <coughs> so this is kind of a, another look at what I was just talking about. Your total budget number is 50, 935, 720. Um, subtracting our, um, well, well, taking together our reserve funds of 1.9 and our revenue of 49.3, you come up with that 5935, 725 number. Again, that's that much from the reserve funds. So um, looking at our total budget this year, there were requests totaling $67,751,439. The budget is as I'm showing to you today. Um, just a remi reminder that this year we did vote to increase the percentage that we put in our rainy day fund. So our rainy day fund this year will be ten million five hundred, based on this budget, ten million five hundred ninety-three thousand seventy-two dollars. Our additional reserve, after we use that one point nine, will be um, six million three hundred eighteen eight ninety-one. You're not going to find many cities our size with our economic. Um, distribution of citizens to have these kinds of numbers. So I'm very, very proud of that. Um, just showing our fund balance detail because you guys always like to see that. Our surplus on 630, um, 21 was 22, 936, 416. We carried over $3.3 million in projects. Um, the mid-year appropriations were 770-194. Those were, you know, emergency things that happened that we made, you know, quick changes to. Um, taking away our um, 10 million 500,000 rainy day fund and the 1.9 in surplus capital. So that leaves us with the projected balance at the end of this next fiscal year of $6.3 million, as I showed you just a few minutes ago. So now we're getting into the operating expenses, and this is just showing you the various departments and the changes, increases, or decreases between the 21-22 year and the 2022-23 year. Some go up, some don't go down. This includes all the expenses, depending on what they're purchasing that year. It's going to 
it can be, you know, way up or it can be way down. Um, you know, especially when you get into some of these departments where you have professional services. Um, so it's hard. To, I like to show you this, but you really have to kind of read between the lines and look at the actual budgets so you can see that we're not increasing and decreasing recurring expenses as much as we are um, changing, a or, you know, had a number in last year or we're adding a number in this year for a specific project. So that's a good, the next page is a continuing of looking at the department year to year comparison. This is the utilities departments. So looking at our water sewer, um, Mr. Kellogg's projecting a revenue of 18,272,000 with expenses of 17,465,681. Um, gas revenue of 23,100. 23, I cannot speak tonight, 23,104,000 expenses of 23,456,489. Stormwater, um, um, this of course would be in Nick's Lane, um, $1.9 million, expenses of 2.341563. Well, and then environmental services with Mr. DePriest, we have expenses of 3,132,000 and revenue of 3,193,779. Getting into the position requests for the city of Gallatin, we had 15 new position requests. We have 31 reclassification requests. Because of trying to implement the pay, in, pay study and the impact that that's gonna have on our budget this year, I did not include any new positions in this budget. There were 31 reclassification requests, and those will um, be reflected in the pay study when it's presented to you in a few weeks. Um, not all exactly, probably, as they were requested, but with some version of them that the engineer thinks makes sense. So um, this slide just gives you um, an overview of the positions that were requested. And there are probably some places where we um, might want to appropriate mid-year or um, we feel real strongly that we um, need to go ahead and do it. Um, the 31 reclassification requests are articulated in this slide. And um, some had to do with just uh, uh, job descriptions and didn't actually change their class, but they're there for you to look at. Um, that's a continuation of the reclassification request because that was a lot, but a lot of the departments really looked at their positions because they knew the pay study was coming through and they wanted to get that baked into that. So on the pay study, um, we're still working with the consultant. Um, I've met with them, department heads have met with them. There are some things that I think we probably all have um, unease with. What we have budgeted for in this budget is a 6.5% average increase at a cost of one point almost $5 million, um, you know, that puts us this market. Now, one thing I do want to say that I have learned in this experience with the, the, the consultant is that he's making a point that that COLA is going to be a really big piece to keep us competitive in the years ahead. So while we have always done step increases, we have not always done COLA. And not just, he's saying not just a 2.5% COLA, but a 3% COLA is probably what we're going to need to look at to stay on track. So I think what's going to happen is we move on down the road. We probably need to spend some dollars to check in with the consultant each year and say, will this, whatever it is that we're looking at, 2.5%, 3%, 3.5%, will that keep us on track with the competition in the market? Um, so I just want y'all to kind of know that as we look, at, look ahead. Now looking at the capital budget, a lot of capital requests. And so what you're going to see here is by department, you're going to see the first column what the request <clears throat> is, the second column is what is funded, and then the third column is what is not funded. So, um, you know, unfortunately, um, there's a lot in here that is not funded. Some of it... Um, not funded strategically by me because I believe it's things that um, we need to um, look at together comprehensively with other needs that aren't even on the table yet because we need to prioritize those and we need to develop a long-term plan for how we might like to address those things. And these would be some of the bigger dollar numbers. Um, and, and then some of the other things that are not getting funded 
it's because I'm thinking that we'll be able to make it happen next year or um, that it's something that I think that we could easily take care of with some small portion of ARPA funds, or I think it's maybe not needed at this time. Um, and some, I'm just, um, just trying to spread the dollars around without going too far into our reserve funds, especially with what I think that we could be facing in the years ahead. So um, that goes through all of the departments, all of the funded and unfunded budget. But I think what will kind of help you drive it home is when you look at those numbers, our total capital, and we've never had a number like this before, is $12,904,930, I think. I'm looking at the screen. Um, and then our unfunded is almost that same amount, $11,043,557. Um, you know, some of the things that I do have in here that I'm so excited that we have in here is um, really, uh, really things for every department. But we have a very robust paving budget in there, which I think is um, you know something that we need to recognize. Um, we have um, new fire apparatus in there. We have um, golf carts for the department. Um, Having a hard time seeing that far. But anyway, there's some big numbers in there for some various things. A lot of engineering projects, um, still taking care of the police cars. That repaving number is 2.1, which a large part of the reason that it's so high this year is because we need to repave Greenlee, and that in itself is going to cost about a million dollars. This is just a quick look at our debt. Um, it's our general obligation bonds. Our 2023 payment will be $2,691,850. Our principal balance is at 26135 Our interest balance is at 6.5. Um, moving on now to community enhancement grant request. Um, I'm trying to think who was there for, Linda, you were there for that day. Um, Elaine, were you there for that day too? For no. the community enhancement mm -hmm. grants? You weren't. I guess it was just Miss Love. Um, so we had, um, we did it as a committee as we have done for several years now and had um, several employees within the city. Um, um, Velma Brinkley participated, she has for several years, as kind of the community expert and the grants and nonprofit expert. So again, I formatted this like some of the other things you've seen with the um, organization, what we granted to them in the previous year, what they have requested, and what the committee has recommended. Now there was, um, you see Friends of Miracle Park there, and that was really just kind of a, a misunderstanding request about why they requested from the city, not really understanding that our expectation with them is that we're already doing a lot to fund the operations of the Miracle Park, and that organization exists to seek funds from other sources that the government can't seek. Um, and then you'll see that Habitat for Humanity did not request funds this year. Um, Mid-Cumberland agencies, we felt like that was, or I say we, the committee felt like that was such a huge organization with so much funding and there wasn't really anyone here that could dial it down to the local level to help us make sense of it. And so they recommended not funding that this year. Um, the Prevention Coalition did not request last year, they have years previously. That's formerly the Anti-Drug Coalition. So they requested 5,000, we recommended 4,000. Transit Alliance of Middle Tennessee, they've requested before, we've never funded them, they requested $1,500. I think the committee's position was that that is largely a lobbying organization or a advocacy organization. And we felt like we wanted to keep our taxpayer dollars local, benefiting some of the good nonprofits that exist in our community. So um, the requested total was 358,470. The recommended um, budgeted number is 298,970, I think. So yeah, oh, there it is in big numbers. Um, so that's just kind of a recap of what the requests were, what the budget's being presented as, what the rainy day fund would be, and then what our other reserve dollars would be. Uh, another look at the total budget, operating revenue and capital, and that's it. That's a quick run through for you guys. Happy to answer any questions. Um, see if there's anything that jumps out at you right, back, right off. Our department heads have just been given a look of that, um, I guess this morning, 
Um, we met today um, in our department head meeting. I told them, you know, be in touch with me if I've done, you know, if I've, I guarantee you there's something that I've left out that I should not have left out that we will have to add back in as we go through the approval process. Also, um, you know, tell the department heads, if I have taken money from somewhere and you think that we should move it from that place to somewhere else within your department, I think we're all open to that. Um, so, um, you know, we have a little flexibility, but um, I do want to keep these dollars um, reined in kind of where we are at that total number. Mayor, I have a question in regards to page uh, 23. We got a lot of our uh, ball fields, parks, uh, with no lights. Why don't we Why don't we put lights on all our fields instead of having our constituents go to Hensonville and other places to use the park? Because it's really, really expensive, and we can't do them all at one time. And I think that those are or some of those could be areas that we might use some ARPA funds. But I mean, you look at the numbers associated with lighting those fields, and they are big, well, big a little dollars. Over a million dollars to light them all. All but, for them. but you know, this is just my personal opinion. Instead of putting money in the rainy day fund, I would love to see the day come where all of our fields, soccer fields, any kind of field that we have in the city of Galton, have lights on them. Well, I think, um, well, first of all, we are required to put the money in the rainy day fund. That's not an option not to. Um, we have to do that. But, um, but what I would really. Amount? Pardon me? Do we have to put that amount? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's uh, required. Um, but what I would say is that we really need to do an analysis, and I think that the park master plan will help us with this, to see what the priorities are for lighting and what kind of, of um, return on investment it brings to us. Um, you know, we don't want to light a field that never gets used at night. And Hey, John, I, I do agree with uh, John D. So, pretty much. Um, I know that over by the Miracle Park, we got two fields over there that's got really nice um, foundations, you know, really nice press box and stuff, and it's just been like a ghost town over for years. If, if I understand what you're saying, too. Is it worth putting the money into it, and we're going to be able to fill them that area over there, the parks, I guess we need to wait back to that master plan comes back I, I and see what they think we need to do with our parks. Because I, I, I hate seeing those, that nice facility over there not that's not even being utilized at all. I just, I don't like that. Yeah. I hate um, to see our, our, our people, our constituents going to Hendersonville and other places to use their park when we have parks and the only issue that we have, we don't have lights on. You know, another thing too, we just built that pickle bark, pickle, mm -hmm whatever that field yeah, That was requested as well. Pickle ball. Pickle yeah, ball. But, but, you know, using it during the day, I, I guess there would be a need the way the hot weather's coming in. People would like to be out there in the evening doing it. But I wish we could look at this uh, study that we done, and then we could try to get an idea of what we need to do and move with our park system the direction we need to go. But, you know, if we, if we like them, then we need a robust plan to utilize I'm those with you there. I'm just pointing out I agree with our, John D. And, and, and I think they will be utilized if, if we have lighting. We, we need a plan to support that. But when are we going to get our evaluation it. of the park systems yeah. back? How many, I agree years, with that. how many years have those parks been without lights? Pardon me? How many years have those parks been without lights? I don't know. Y'all tell me you've been here longer than me. Long time. <laughs> I, we need to when are we going to get that survey back? Um, I don't. Mr. Brown, do you have any idea? I hope when it's due up. Okay, so we'll have that. Let's see. We got one. Let me see what we got. I can't even see. Maybe if we had more. Uh, hey, let me ask you one more thing, in. Paige. Pardon me. Th this don't affect the budget at all, but I think Jimmy and I had some conversations about it. The backage row for GHS. I believe that's completely done with by now, isn't it? Well, I do not have that in the budget this year, but um, we have not gotten, we have met with the school board, I think a couple of times at this point with the promise that they would get back to us. We said we'd stay, you know, we'd show them where it was going to go, and we're just not getting good communication. So I'm, I'm not going to say it's dead, 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 dead. I mean, we'll continue to make the offer because we do think it would be very good. 
Um, but you know, they got to cooperate with us. We don't have any money set aside for that, though. Um, not at this point, no. Oh, okay. Uh, that's my. Yeah. We may have we had some of this carried over, Mr. Tuttle. Yeah, just just a little that's carried over, but. And we only have the four fields. We've got the Thompson uh, Park field, uh, need lights. We've got the Miracle Park, uh, Municipal Park field, need lights. We've got the Pickleball field, need lights. And we've got the Triple Creek Park, uh, Triple Creek uh, Soccer, need light. And if we was to put lights on four, all four of those fields, it would only be like $1,125,000. Only? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, these, these are our facilities. We need to fix them. Uh, I, I do understand. Them? I understand. Because that. right now, the only time they could be used is really in the daytime. Well, but there's, you know, again, I think we need feedback from the park plan, and we need some plan to make that be, make it provide, mm -hmm. make that investment bring us a return. Um, and of course, I'm looking at it in a larger context than probably you are, just having seen this because. I know what our other needs are. You know, we're looking at a really major road that we're going to have to work with the state on based on the governor, governor's most recent budget. That's the city's going to be, or not the city, but this county and the city are going to be responsible for $20 million of. We have, you know, a new fire hall on the horizon, which is going to be several million dollars. And, um, you know, just lots of needs that the city is going to have. I've only got one more question. Okay. Is I looked down here, and when I looked at the parks budget right there, I seen a million dollar request for golf cart shed. Um, my question is: Is our golf carts that we're renting <laughs> out or that we're using are they just sitting out in the elements? No. There's an existing shed. This was like for more to expand rental opportunities. Okay. All right. I'm now, good. I just want to ask you a couple of questions. First of all, when were the when will the pay study be back, do you say? We think he's going to be presenting in two weeks to this body. Okay. And the second question I noticed on these new positions, and I'm not saying I don't disagree with you, but there's several people on here that's asking for administrative assistance, such as IT and public works. Do we not have administrative assistance in those departments? We do not in the IT. Um, we have, wait, where, okay. Positions right here. I'm just, I'm just curious. We had those. Mr. Dupree, is that administrative assistant a second one, or is that your reclassification? That somehow got messed up in what got sent to me. Reclassification yeah. request from a customer service representative yeah. to us. So IT they're going from customer service to. But in IT, we don't have one, but yeah. we got in others. Yeah. Mayor, could I ask just one more question? Sure. Of Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown, could I ask you a question, please, once you get through talking? Anything. <laughs> yes, what? Will you come to the podium, please? Mm -hmm. Out of these four fields that I just uh, call out that need to be uh, need to have lights on, which one would you say would be the top priority? Would it be the Triple Creek uh, soccer light field, or would it be the pickleball light field, or Miracle? or the Municipal Park field, or Thompson Park, if you had just one? Well, the soccer is, is, is the most important one right now because they're, they're just out of room until we buy some more land to do something. And uh, Mary and I met with them, and that's what they want, that they could play at night and have some more tournaments. Now, the fields at Thompson and Municipal that's on there, that's replacement lights get, that could go down to the bottom, the Triple Creek lights or would be additional ball fields lit. And then, of course, the pickleball courts or the new courts that we're finishing up, I hope, within the next two weeks, if we can get some lines. Let's try and so, make that the lowest priority at this point since they're getting courts. So do you think the soccer field... I would say by citizens, the pickleball is, and soccer is your most... We've got over 100 that plays... Pickleball right now, and they're wanting more courts. I hear more from baseball parents. Yeah, I hear it all. Well, that would be the new Triple Creek. Which one of the fields would bring the most revenue from out of town? But for the cost, which pickleball is small, I'm so and the baseball, if we could 
get that and we would turn complex B into a uh, baseball, softball boat combination of tournaments. I think we would prioritize those, in yeah. my opinion, if we're going to do it. Well, I, I say it again. I'm probably the only one sitting up here now that travels every weekend to travel ball. Basketball, football, baseball, I do it. I know Don does it. I and I to. think you used to. I think we're losing a lot of revenue. I'm not saying in the city, but restaurants, the businesses here in town, there's a lot of money to be had that, that we're not tapping into at all. And we need to get this park system figured out and under control and move forward with it some way. I really do. But I, that's, that's why I think, I think we need to wait till that plan comes that's, back. I'm, I'm fine yeah, with I agree that. With you and, on that. And do that but. Yeah, I agree. And Mayor's already said that, you know, when the plan comes back, we do have maybe some ARCA money that we might be able to right. put into those lights right. and stuff. Right, so. Right, right. So but, you know, like the pickle bar, I, I know our electric department probably doesn't stock or have the big lights to, it takes to, to light a field, but you would think pickle, pickle whatever that is, oh. um, you would think that we could have some lighting down there at our electric department that could help us get over that hump right there. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Brown. I appreciate so we, it. Thanks. Motion to send on to uh, council for the, the budget. Budget. I'll second. And what I'll do is after I get feedback from departments, I'll, <coughs> department heads, I'll probably come back to you all as we go to vote on it and spreadsheet what the, what the total impact, well, what the proposed changes are and what that impact is. That's kind of how we've done it in the past. And you can either be okay with it or say, uh-uh, I'll take this out. Okay. Okay, great. Hey, we're Any open for discussion. discussion. We got a first and a second. We're open for discussion. I just got one more thing I'd like to say, and that's it. I see that IT department asked for $350,000 and got turned down $350,000. I don't know if that's new software, new equipment, or what, but are we still able to uh, work in the capacity that Function. Yeah, I thought all of that was for um, the document storage, but apparently some of it's for, or, or you know, the new doc converting documents to digital. That's what I thought it was all for. But then I was told this morning by Miss Smiley that it's actually some of it is for some much needed storage. But like when I, my challenge is when I am looking at our departmental, but on one of the many challenges, I'm looking at our departmental budgets and I'm comparing them to other you know cities in the region. And I just see in some areas we are so high in comparison to other cities. And so I feel a stress that we can't keep getting so much out of whack with other cities. And so that's why I cut that there, just to kind of draw those numbers back a little bit. But I think we are going to have to put some dollars in for storage for them. Well, in defense of IT, I mean, we went for many, many years and really didn't have an IT department. Right, right. And so we, oh, had, they do a great job, we had to put I mean. it all on within a very short amount of time. Since Ms. Miley's been here, we just put it on. So, I mean, I understand it's a lot of money, but, you know, in defense of the IT department, it's expensive. But we had to put all ours on at one time. So, I, I mean, I agree with Paige. We put a lot of money into it. And we got a great IT department. I'm not saying that. We got a great IT department. But we put a lot of money, and we went from one or two employees to I don't know how many they have now, but, uh, but several. And it takes that many to run it. So... But I appreciate the budget. I, th I think you've done a great job with it, you and Rachel. And oh, my huge compliments both to our department heads and certainly uh, to Ms. And Nichols. department heads. And uh, we're getting a lot done in this budget, though, so and I appreciate it. As, as conscientious as I am with our budget, every single one of our department heads are, too. And, and I appreciate their willingness to work with us all to to keep things running so very well and... That's um, that actually goes down to every single employee in your departments too, because you know employees all all. What are y'all doing over there? Trying to turn the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to what? Nothing. Turn the lights, lights on. Well, trying to be complimentary, but if you're not going to listen to the compliments, we move along. Thank you. <laughs> get Any out of here. further conversation? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, move it on. Uh, and next is our ordinance adopting fiscal year 2023 budget. Rachel Nichols, please. 
think that's what y'all just voted on, so thank you. Uh, <laughs> before the meeting, I handed out the draft ordinance. I was so late in pulling it together. It hasn't gone to Miss um, High Macaulay's office yet to get a number assigned to it, but that's the mayor's presentation put in the budget format that the state requires. Um, so. so this is the same thing, just in another format? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Which has been um, a real challenge because the state's making all kinds of changes to the formats and how they want things, but Ms. Nichols is on top of it all. And then the next item on the agenda is the tax rate ordinance that we're required to pass three times. Um, for the 2023 proposed budget, we're leaving the tax rate at 0.8001. Second. Any discussion? So we're leaving the tax as long as we're not raising our tax. Right. All right. It's always good to hear. Make sure everybody reads that. We are not raising our As tax. much as we hear about people saying we have to raise them. <laughs> All in favor? I've got a question to ask Susie, I'll too, see. after we vote this. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Any opposed? Moves up. Other business? Yeah, uh, I'm not on the internet, but uh, I did get an interesting text that uh, since the elections, I think, I think, well, I seen a statement out there that if we, the city, approves certain developments, then a county commission would be fining us or penalizing us. Is there any merit to that? County Commission? Yeah. I haven't, I see, did anybody else see that? I haven't seen that, so I really, I would need to read it, but to my knowledge, I don't know of a mechanism one of the, one of allowed the, by state law to penalize us. One of the commissioners, uh, I think, was campaigned that, that there will be penalties for the cities for I guess, unnecessary developments, and I was just... I don't know anything in state law currently that would allow that. Um, you know, like I said, I would need to see exactly what the discussion was, but to my, to my knowledge, as I'm sitting here listening to what you're saying, I don't know of anything in state law that allows that. Okay. I'd be more concerned about the liability for the county of trying to c condemn property in that way, you know? That wouldn't be our concern, so let's keep it on what we're doing, I'd say. We got enough to say grace over. Right. <laughs> Do we have any other business? I would like to uh, mention that it would be really nice if we could get away from all of these papers and put everything online. Get in there. Mm -hmm. I hear. Mm -hmm. I think we'll I said that. Elaine, we tried that. No. I'm Eileen. <laughs> <laughs> We may be getting there, but I, compared to when I'm on planning and everything's online, that's tough. Yeah. <laughs> that's tough to I look at everything. The paper. I don't need an extra light for the computer. We are going to go to digital. Um, Jeff and Angela have been working on that for, and Lori, how long? Two years? Three years? That's not part of our two three hundred fifty thousand dollar. No, <laughs> it's no. It's, it's basically <laughs> trying to find um, the software and have them make. Um, adjustments so that it's easier to navigate than what you're doing at planning and for the public too. I know last night I was downloading the planning agenda and it took 15 minutes and then I got kicked off the uh, meeting and I had re-downloaded again to get the Zoom link. I mean, that's not oh. very useful. Oh, by the way, Linda, you're doing a great job on planning too. Thank you, Sean. It's kind of getting... <laughs> <laughs> There's a threshold to. <laughs> John just likes you being on there instead of him, Linda. That's all. Okay, any other business? Okay, uh, department heads. Anything? Then I'll jump up. Okay. Motion adjourn. Second. Adjourn. Thank you.
than that. that right. the utilities. But, are we the same to same. but the rent, but the comp plan kept the same policy, which the council never adopted. The council did adopt, went back and forth, adopting resolutions to either restrict it or allow it. So right now, the policy in effect, the resolution, which was passed in about 2016 or 17, allows it. So what could happen is that people who want to develop in the I'm case, wrong, wrong, Larry. Allows it. It's not. Sorry. People who want to develop in the uh, surrounding the city, using city utilities, would be able to do so, of course, at their cost assuming there's capacity available, but at their cost and develop in the counties.